part B. Uh, find x dot, x, y dot, and y. x dot, x, y dot, and y by integrating um, the acceleration equations. The acceleration equations. Um, taking the origin at Steve's hands. Okay? Now, they provide you the acceleration equations, but you can probably think of what they are. right? I've got two acceleration equations, one that corresponds to the horizontal and one that corresponds to the vertical, right? And the reason why considering these differently um, is better than this is because we know what's going on. Think about this. What force horizontally is acting on the apple? I mean, think about a force, right? He throws it and then is anything slowing it down or speeding it up? And the answer is no. Like, I mean, we're, we're simplifying things. We're not thinking about air resistance. It's just going. It's not like... Um, it's not like the apple is magically accelerating this way or it's being pushed in the opposite direction by gravity or something like that. X double dot, what's happening to the horizontal momentum? It's not changing, okay? So I'm gonna go after this right away. I can develop these equations from here given these initial conditions, okay? So, um, by the way, I like to put in the fact that when I go from one line to another, I actually say, I'm integrating now, okay? You're gonna have a lot of equations flying around, so try and make the connections between them clear. All right, you integrate up once with respect to time. So from zero, you get a constant. The first one of many, right? You're gonna get four. So there you go, introduce it, okay? But when t equals zero, right, at initial conditions, you've got this. Square root of five, right? Uh, in fact, because you've got no acceleration horizontally, you've always got this, don't you? That is always going to be the horizontal velocity. So you can say, therefore, the velocity will be the square root of five all the time, no exceptions. Right? Okay, we want the x equation as well, the displacement for horizontal, so we integrate again. So you get x. We're integrating with respect to time, so what do you get? Square root of five t plus another constant, woohoo, okay. I know in situations like this, where you start at the origin, you've got no forces acting on it, it is very simple, but you can't leave out these constants, important, okay? Now what? Good, because I begin at the origin, this constant's gonna to evaluate to zero, so therefore, now I have my displacement equation for the horizontal axis, great. I'm going to rehearse exactly the same thing, but for vertical. Okay, now again, I'm thinking about what forces are acting on this apple. What's accelerating it up or down, okay? What's in the situation? This is gravity. That's, that's the thing that pulls it back down to the ground and there's nothing else, okay? Now, it'd either be minus 9.8 or minus 10. In this question, they're going with 10. Okay, there you go. So, we climb up the ladder once, integrating to get to y dot. And what do we get? Negative 10t plus, oh, another one, hooray. Okay. Initial velocity in the upward, downward direction is this guy, right? So when t equals zero, this should appear, two root five, right? Okay, so I'm getting y dot equals negative 10t plus two root five. Okay, and as you can see, as t gets bigger, right, this stays where it is, but this will get, um, this number here will get increasingly negative. Eventually, it'll take over, and that's why it comes back down. Okay, okay, we can integrate again. Um, and this will give us vertical displacement. Okay, what happens? Minus 10t, negative 5t squared plus. 2 root 5t, plus the fourth and last constant. Hooray, we got there. I mean, of course we got four constants because we had to integrate four times, right? Okay, again, we're starting at the origin, which is 0, 0. So thankfully, he becomes 0. There you go, four equations, right?